Live from the John Lovitz Podcast Theater, it's Hollywood Babylon. With your hosts, Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman. It is Saturday night in Hollywood, and that means it's time to babble the fuck on. I'm Kevin Smith. And I'm Ralph Garman. I want to thank Kevin Smith for sitting in for our usual co-host tonight. It's good to be back. Feels excellent to be back, it's man. Good Feels to have really you good. home. Oh, it's nice to be here. I missed it. I missed it a lot. I love coming down those steps. I a lot miss of energy you. in the room. Hi, Kids everybody. Hey, you. man. Yes. Wow. Well, I'm ready to go. Start the show, motherfucker. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm about a quart low. I'll be right with you. All right. <laughs> Megan, grab my pina colada. Is that what you're calling it these days? <laughs> I uh, was on vacation. I had a pina colada. I was like, this is fucking amazing. This is the best booze that ever happened. So now I'm looking for it everywhere. I went to Burger King. I was like, you got pina colada? <laughs> they didn't. Come to the dark side, young <laughs> Skywalker. <laughs> Um, first thing, let's get some business out of the way. We are uh, taking the show on the road. I don't think we've talked about it together. Yes. People have been asking, are we going to go out there and uh, meet some people outside of the halls of the John Lovitz po Podcast Theater? And we are. We're going to uh, San Diego first. Yeah! We're going to be down there the weekend of the San Diego Comic Con. Some of you may have heard of it. Playing where? The House of Blues, I believe, right? It is. It's HBO at the HOB. Get out of here. That's awesome. HBO at the Hob, man. Yep. Get hobbled, bitch. <laughs> Mr. Man. Dirty bird. Hobble the fuck on. Hobble the fuck on. <laughs> and then uh, Vegas in August. Yes. Yeah. We are going out and playing the show in Vegas. And also, thank you. There's your penis. Also, there's my penis colada. Penis colada. <laughs> um... Then also, uh, I don't. Have, the dates are not confirmed. We haven't announced them yet, but we're going on a mini Texas tour right. as well. So there's about, I think, three or four stops that we're going to be doing in Texas, and I believe that's in August at some point. So uh, look for us in a, a town near you. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah, coming your way. Although the people in this room are like, so who cares? That's later. <laughs> yeah. What about tonight, bitches? Stop selling. And one more thing to sell. This is brand new. That just literally came off the presses. So this I want to give you your selling. chance if you're interested. The, uh, the very first official Hollywood Babylon t-shirt. Those are available tonight over there where uh, the Garmy shirts are usually for it sale. It depicts so. Ralph and I as the cartoon characters you sometimes see on the, on the page. It's yes. adorable. People. And there's a whole bunch. So there'll be a bunch of t-shirts, correct? Yeah, we'll have like limited editions. Yes. There's Cause... one, it, it basically, you see, hold it up again. Right. There's uh, me and him sitting next to each other. Then the shirt changes uh, by putting us into two separate characters. So the next one, or one of the next ones, is Ralph is Dr. Peter Venkman, and I'm Slimer. Yeah. <laughs> This dude's a genius. Who's the good that This is Michael Waite. He's a guy in England who just, he's a graphic artist, and he sends us this stuff. He says, oh, I just came up with this one. He sends us one of us as Batman and Robin, or uh, Taylor the astronaut and Cornelius the chimpanzee from Planet of the Apes. You may have seen the cartoon he did with us as Indiana Jones and Sala from uh, yeah. Raiders. So he's our official uh, graphics guy. And he's we're... awesome. He's a genius like that broad who wrote the Potter books. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's from England, same thing. But she's out of work now. That's true. Yeah, she's probably hurting for money. Yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> he could probably get her. <laughs> he probably could. <laughs> All right, let's start the show as we do every week with some shout-outs, saying hello to some people who came especially long distances or are here for special occasions. Wanted to give them a, a little heads-up. And thanks for coming out. Uh, Christina and Nate, are you guys in the audience tonight? Yeah. Christina and Nate. Hi, guys. That was so phonetic. Woo, here. <laughs> you know, normally people kind of slur together. Woo, I'm so here. But she's like, woo, we are here. <laughs> Very well done. No contractions in that family. My husband, Nate, has been enjoying your podcast since the beginning. And despite my better judgment and superior taste. <laughs> that's how it's going to be, is it? <laughs> He got me hooked on HBO as well a few months back. I got him tickets to your show on the 25th as a Father's Day present, which I knew would go over well because he is a cheap ass. <laughs> Even though your tickets, tickets to your show don't exactly break the bank. It would really make our night if you could tell him what an amazing husband and father he is aside from him being a cheap ass 
as Edwin, my personal favorite impression. Thanks so much for being more amusing than I initially thought possible, she writes. I don't think I like this broad at all. It sounds like one of those compliments where I'm like, how was that? And she was like, your dick was adequate. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't the worst fuck I've ever had. <laughs> yeah. You came. That kind of... <laughs> oh my goodness, Nate. Why are you so cheap? Life's for the living, for God's sakes. Open up your wallet, you tight ass. <laughs> buy these people a round of drinks at your table. These strangers, buy them something. <laughs> Show us all that you're not a cheap fuck, Nate. Even your wife hates you. <laughs> also here that's tonight... A good, that's a good fucking mantra, man. A good mantra to live by. Like, life is for the living. <laughs> I'm gonna remember that. Every time I'm feeling down and shit like that, like the thing that's I'll gonna... I'll on your shoulder. Yeah, boom. Kevin, life is for the living. Life is for the living, Kev. <laughs> here, let's try. Cheer up. I'm gonna look... Well, hold on one sec. Okay. Uh, I've just disappointed my wife sexually again. Uh, I'm sitting in my fucking office. Why am I such a loser? Kevin! Life is for the living. Don't worry about it, don't you know? Thanks, Ralph as Edwin, you know. And then I go about my day. I like it. Uh, how about Cynthia, Sal, and John? Are you guys here? Wow. Front... You're right up front, sir. We don't need to yell. <laughs> that never happens. <laughs> Very aware that you're there. I could tell because you're right in front of me waving, and I knew you were here. All right. Holy shit. <laughs> He's the Bai Ling fan club president? Two weeks, ago. two weeks ago. I was well drunk two weeks ago, madam. <laughs> You're lucky I remember that I'm I here tonight. she said he was like, oh, he's the violin playing fag. <laughs> I was like, hey, hey. <laughs> we don't say violin here. That's right. <laughs> Small viola. Uh, Cynthia writes, my two friends and I will be attending the June 25th show. This will be my and Sal's third time at the show and John's second time, and we have yet to see Kevin host the podcast. <laughs> wow. That's rough. That's weird, yeah, yeah. I don't want to start referring to him as Kevin, the one who misses the podcast when I go Smith, but I'm starting to get a complex. <laughs> Actually, I apologize, Kevin. I know you did ask me to warn you when Cynthia was coming to the show so you could cancel, but uh, I completely forgot. Like, is that chick coming? He's like, yeah, yeah sorry. Oh, fuck. Forgot. Hey, I'm here, man. Hey, how are you? I'll try to turn it on just for you guys. But the rest of these people, just fuck them? Fuck these people. Yeah. Right. They know what they're in for. How about Martin and Sandra from Stockholm, Sweden? Are you guys here? Where are you guys? Where are well, you? up the top there. Wow, are you, are you more comfortable being on top of a mountain or something from Sweden? Is that why you chose the third floor? Well, it's happy, happy to have you here. No, men are from Sweden, so they want to be up top where they can fucking private. I see. Because they're sexy. During the show, no yeah. less. They are very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Is that too sweet? It's a short poll right there. Sorry, I didn't put much thought into it. <laughs> yeah, they are. My fiance and I come from Stockholm, Sweden to LA for vacation and hit the jackpot, scoring some HBO tickets. Yeah, you, these are impossible to get. <laughs> <laughs> this is a harder get than the Grammys. I don't know how you worked your way, and you got third floor seats too. I don't, I don't know how you possibly scored those. <laughs> See, in is, there guy, life, is in a guy on City Walk like who's trying to sucker tourists? Like, psst, psst, psst. These are really hard to get. These yeah. are Hollywood Babylon tickets. I'll sell you this and the big H in the Hollywood sign. <laughs> See, in our language, jackpot means good. Yeah. <laughs> in uh, in Sweden, it's it completely means different. The yeah. shit we couldn't get into any other real comedy act in tonight. In Sweden, it's fondue pot. That is the, it's really the good thing. It's like, oh, we hit the fondue pot. Totally. <laughs> It's all Farfet Nugent. <laughs> I think that's German. Whatever. <laughs> it ain't here. That's all I know. Please give us a shout out in the voice of the special needs McDonald's girl. <laughs> oh, 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 you Swedes. <laughs> you Swedes are cruel. Uh, uh, well, they have euthanasia there in that country. <laughs> So they're, they're capable of anything. I kind of retired that voice because it upset a lot of people. It does upset a lot of people, yes. And uh, there are people with special needs and the parents of people with special needs and I got lots of angry emails. So I, I know, what? Your kid's autistic? Do it. She just gave us a license. <laughs> Holy shit, we got a pass. 
from an autistic mom. That's like, you know, every time an autistic mom gives you a pass, an angel gets its wings. <laughs> Thank you for coming so far. Oh. Thank you for coming all the way from Switzerland. We do like fries with that. We can give you an apple pie. Do they have apple pies in Austria where you're from? We also have Big Macs, where they say in your country, Big Macs. <laughs> All right, there you go. <laughs> Martin, just just Martin. when they thought you weren't ever coming to hell, they get to warm the bed up for you again. Yeah. They're screwing the plaque onto the door of my office. <laughs> hey, everybody, he's coming back. Uh, Martin adds, my fiance is riding the cotton pony this week. So this shout-out might get me a BJ back at the hotel. <laughs> you are sexy bastards, you sweets. I don't care if you're bleeding. <laughs> Time for another tampon. <laughs> uh, Ralph and Kevin writes, Tara, is Tara here? Tara? Hi, Tara, how are you? Tara writes, I'm attending your Hollywood Babylon show on the 25th, traveling from Redding, California, way up north by Oregon. <laughs> Since I'm in town alone, I'll be the loner at the table for one. The fuck out of here. Are you really by yourself? Right. Are on. you here for another reason and you came to see uh, us? You separately? doing other things in town? Do you for work or, or something? Yeah. Going to a class? Yeah. Right okay. on. Oh well, my thanks God. for coming you're by yourself. And you're never alone at a Hollywood Babylon yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. These people to the right and to the left of you will be glad if you gave them anal. That's usually how it works out. <laughs> Let's, uh, want, you want to come up here and sit with us? All right, bring a chair and come sit on here up for here. a while. Come on up. She's by herself, dude. I know. Well, it's nice that she came. I've gone to many movies and been like, one, please. <laughs> I know how rough it is. I've always waited for somebody to be like, sit next to me. Never happens. I've really waited for them to be like, sit next to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here she comes now. This is Tara, everybody. Everybody say, hi, Tara. Hi, Tara. See, you're not alone anymore, Tara. Hi. Yeah. Do you want to sit behind? Do you feel a little oh, exposed? Look, this gentleman brought you up your food and your drink. We can have food up here? <laughs> <laughs> this changes the show completely for me. Oh, we're screwed now. Yeah, Lovitz usually has a whole dinner up here while we record. <laughs> Does he? Yeah. Uh, let me continue reading your email. Tara. Is it Tara or Tara? How do you prefer it? Tara? Okay. So hold on. So it doesn't happen unless you do it on mic. Say hi to everybody. Hi. <laughs> Since I'm coming to the show alone, well, how many times are you going to bring that up in the fucking email? <laughs> we get it. You're alone. Uh, how about throwing a shout out for me to my roller derby team, the Shasta Roller Derby? Woo! You're a roly yeah! d roller derby girl? You're a derby doll? Wow. Our team is fully nonprofit, and we do lots of community fundraising. A shout out from Kevin would be a wonderful gift to my girls for all the hard work and ass kicking on the track. Kevin, you want to give a shout out to the Shasta Roller Derby? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> uh, she adds, are roller skates allowed at the show? No, Tara, and I hope you didn't wear them because it's a strict no skates policy here. She also says, a picture with Kevin would absolutely make my trip and surely remain my profile pic on Facebook for a year. Well, you got to sit next to him. That's better than a picture. Do you have a camera? Give it to somebody. They'll take our picture. All right. Yeah. Give, it, give it to one of the... Give, give, give it to the Byling fan excitable. club president yeah, down yeah. here. He'll, he'll take it very loudly. Put your violin down. Here we right. go. Take a pic. I don't think you need a flash. We got the, the lights on up here. How'd that work out? It work out? Oh, that's a good one. That is a Facebook picture. All right. It's literally like stress. I don't know. Elongated like man? Yeah, I lost my, lost my sense of depth perception. All right. <laughs> Let's, uh, how about Alan and Richard from Glasgow, Scotland? Yeah! Are you guys here? Woo! Glasgow. Um, love the show. Never fail to listen. We appreciate it, guys. Okay. We're in the U.S. for two weeks. Are you guys all right over there? Are you okay? It's cute. It's a really, really cute reading picture. here. It looks uh, we're, like we're at the, the prom. We're in the... <laughs> You know what that means after the prom? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pranal. <laughs> Maybe you can do her on her skates. <laughs> Just don't get behind her. You'll be chasing her all the way. <laughs> With your pants that around your ankles. Look how penguin. 
I don't think she wanted to fuck me. I did. I was just on skates. <laughs> Alan and Richard write, we're in the U.S. for two weeks and we just had to get our fill of cock jokes and whatnot. Well, you came to the right place, fellas. Uh, our friend Scott couldn't be here tonight. He needs to be told where his priorities lie and that he should have come with us on our next trip. It would make us feel right at home if you would pick on him in the voice of Sir Sean Connery, of course. Well, uh, I'm sure if Sir Sean ever did meet him, he would call him a cunt, say, says Alan and Richard. Credits, they end their email nice. with. Nice, smart. Well, Scott, you didn't come to... Uh, Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Scott, you didn't come on the trip to the United States with your friends, Alan and Richard. I would say that makes you a cunt. But it turns out you're not mad enough to be a cunt. You're a pushy galore is what you are. All right, there we go, fellas. Heather writes, I'm bringing my boyfriend, Rogelio, to the show this Saturday. Are Heather and Rogelio are here? Hey, you have to say Rogelio. Uh, it says did right you, here. Is that, did you get the pronunciation right? Is that yeah. right? You know why? Because I remembered now as I read this. Uh, he worked as an intern at K-Rock FM this past semester. That's how I know the guy, because he was an intern on our show. Oh. Uh, he also knows Kevin. Kevin, he gave you a cookie one time in the mall. <laughs> well, that narrows it down. <laughs> remember that guy who gave you that cookie that time in the mall? <laughs> you know what? I remember every guy that ever gave me a cookie. I don't. Which mall? Sherman Oaks I do Gallery. remember that. <laughs> you weren't a little boy or anything, were you at the time? <laughs> hey, you want we a cookie? A... <laughs> I think we were in a bathroom. <laughs> in the back of a panel van in the parking lot. <laughs> and he lured you in with a snickerdoodle. Totally. Uh, it'd, be all, it'd be awesome if you give him a shout-out for his birthday. That would be awesome. Well, happy birthday, Rohypnol, as I used to call you back at the station. <laughs> Rohypnol. Uh, this comes from Nick. My brother Andy and I will be coming to the show on the 25th. You guys here? Yeah, everybody's yeah. here tonight. Very exciting. Team Nick. If uh, everything goes to plan, we'll be dragging along our sister-in-law, Johnny, who has flown all the way down from Fort Wainwright, Alaska. Wow. We're hoping you could give me a birthday shout-out as Peter Lorre, since he and I share the same birthday, as does Harley Quinn Smith. Same birthday as Peter Lorre. Did you know that? That would be tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. June 26th. Right on. Really? Happy birthday to you, Nick. Oh, I hope no one poisons you or stabs you or strangles you or shoots you or, or guts you, cuts your guts out and wears them around their neck as a bow tie. He was a creepy dude, that Peter yeah. yeah. I'd be honored if you would do a shot with me in celebration in accordance with the Babylon Shot Drinking Policy, section 8675309. <laughs> Wait a minute, 8675309, I know that number. I've seen it on a wall. Yeah, I will, uh, I'll do a shot with you for your birthday, absolutely, sir. Oh, you're not bringing me one, are you? What is it? Patron? I can't drink tequila, it makes me vomit. I'm sorry. He thought you meant a shot in the mouth. <laughs> no, I can't, I can't drink tequila. Tequila's the one that makes me sick. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's your fucking kryptonite, eh? <laughs> Some reason I get you sick shouldn't have told me we'll that. We'll get a shot of Jack or something and we'll do it a little bit later, right? But thank you. And thanks for wearing the Garmy shirt, too. I appreciate that. Uh, Wait a fucking shit in his mouth, dude. <laughs> like, fuck your shot. Sit down. I just, I don't, I don't want to reject the shot. That's bad form. Right. So I was trying to warn him. You already did reject the, the shot, but though. I, but I, like, hold it and just put it down and not drink with them. That would be you rude. You could have done what they do in the movies with, like, okay, one, two, three. Throw it over your shoulder. <laughs> shoulder. Um... How about this one? My fiance JD. Is JD in the audience tonight? JD? Where's JD? JD is here. Uh, your party's, this is part of your bachelor party? Yeah. yeah. Ah, that's fucking sad. <laughs> is it three, like two three, guys and they're here? Three they're like, is? How many? Three? Yeah. Three? Right really? Don't, do don't have a lot of friends, huh, JD? <laughs> yeah. you, don't, you don't need a lot of friends. You just need two who are willing to jerk you off tonight. <laughs> <laughs> or one. Well, uh, JD, this email comes from your fiance, Caitlin. Caitlin Wright. <laughs> this is the crowd. Ooh. <laughs> crowd oh, moaning shit. already. Yeah, really. My fiance, JD, and I have been together for six years. She writes six and a half years, I'm sorry. We're getting married in two weeks. He's going to be at the show tonight as part of his bachelor party. Ralph, can you please tell him don't do anything stupid in your Al Pacino voice? <laughs> Thanks, That's Caitlin. So sweet, what the man. fuck is she thinking? <laughs> I, she's got nothing to worry about. They came here. <laughs> Oh, oh, JD, come on now. 
Are you gonna let this woman tell you what to do, JD? Wow. I don't know about you, but when some woman says, don't do anything stupid, I'm fucking somebody. <laughs> Two weeks, they put on the chains. Tonight, you're free. Come on now. Anal with a hooker. No condom. Male hooker, you take it. Life is for the living. <laughs> Wow. Hey man, this chick came here alone. <laughs> you guys might want to hang out. Yeah. Not a hooker. Not a hooker, no. You probably don't charge. Yeah. I'm saying, why pay? She's here by. It's not a crime if you give it away. Yeah. They All right. Uh, I bet you they got skates. <laughs> now that would be a bachelor party. Totally. Me and the two guys, we all fucked the same girl. She was on roller skates. <laughs> That's a story. Are you a jammer? Blocker. Blocker. Blocker, right on. Blocker, not a jammer? Yeah, blockers could take it. <laughs> I don't know anything about the sport of roller derby. What is the difference between a jammer and a blocker? Uh, jammers, are the, jammers are the point scorers, and blockers are trying to beat their ass down so they don't score any points. All right. Well, you're in for a good time tonight, J.D. <laughs> The jammers are the ones that chase the golden snitch. Ah, I see. They're the ones on the broom. Yes. Okay. Uh, you know, I realize we don't have a jingle for the shout-outs. We should get one. Mm. We've got a jingle for almost every segment on the show. If you're listening and you want to be involved in the show in some way, share, or form, create a really funny jingle. We'll use it. We don't like to pay for anything. No. And we like jingles for everything because it makes us... Uh, we're able to masquerade like this is a real show that way. If we <laughs> yeah, put together actual yeah. elements. Okay. Like, for instance, we have a jingle for the emails. Ain't no drag. Garvin's got an email back. <laughs> Featuring Kevin's reaction. Yeah. First one comes from Lance Corporal Ryan. He's in the Marine Corps and he's in Camp Pendleton. After spending four years in the Corps, I've been stationed at Camp Pendleton. I found that nothing in California brings me more joy than Hollywood Babylon. How nice is that? What are you laughing at? The next live. Although I, though I never got to see the show live, Uncle Sam's a douche, he writes. <laughs> I've never I, heard anyone put it that way. I've listened to every podcast from day one. Thanks for making the last year of my military service bearable. Stay golden. Lance Corporal Ryan, USMC, and Garmy, by the way. Well, right thank on, you, man. Corporal. Lance Corporal. For defending our shores, because as far as I know, Camp Pendleton has never been invaded. He's doing yeah. a hell of a job down there. He's holding down the fort. Yes. <laughs> Eugene writes from Melbourne, Australia. Sorry, Melbourne, as they say down there, Australia. Uh, I had to share this picture I happened upon. It's a scene from Clerks rendered in Legos. Have you seen this? I have uh, not. I'm not sure. I've seen uh, Clerks in Legos before, but maybe not this one. He sent this along. This apparently is from a place called Brick World, which has displays in Chicago and Indianapolis. Enjoy the podcast. Love... Eugene, he sent us the picture along. There it is there. That's, a, uh, that's Clerks in Legos. It's Dante hanging the sign there. And if you look uh, to your right, you can see our boy Kevin there standing in yeah. front uh, with Muse listening to the boombox right there. I wish I was that pin. <laughs> the J is good. He's got a lady's wig on. <laughs> <I know. laughs> that's funny. Uh, next email is from Dave. He writes, as you may have heard, New York State just passed a pretty important bill. I know it's kind of obscure, he writes, jokingly, I'm sure. Uh, maybe you West Coasters haven't heard the news yet, but New York just legalized marriage equality. I was out drinking with my friend Mallory at the time, and she was so overwhelmed with joy that she broke down in tears. Nothing better than a crying lesbian, in my opinion. <laughs> that is hot. Know what that means. Um, I would like if you guys would give her a shout out and maybe sing Lady Gaga's Born This Way in the Edwin voice. He's got a lot of work tonight. Okay, really quickly. <laughs> I'm beautiful in my way, because God makes no mistakes. I'm on the right track, baby. I was born this way. <laughs> and life is for the living, Kevin. <laughs> um, I do, it's so weird. I wouldn't have even known how to sing the song. You know that song? Yeah, you just sing Express Yourself by Madonna. <laughs> Plug in new words, and it's very simple. 
Uh, Mikiel from, uh, where is he from? The Netherlands writes, love your show. Found this interesting ad for home solar panels. Have no idea where it's from, but the artist was truly inspired. Here's a photo from a brochure for home <laughs> solar panels. I can't explain that. I, I, somebody sent that to me on the internet and I felt like Homer with Mr. Sparkle. <laughs> I was just like, what is this? It has Silent Bob saying, my solar panels will save on my gas bills. It's for, weird, For man. some reason, Jay is saying, yeah, but they're expensive and... What? I can't read upside down, but... Yeah, it's not worth it, he's Something writing. about cock smoking, I'm don't sure. So, no. But, but it's I don't know from why a textbook or something Jay like and that. Silent Bob are selling solar panels. Somebody, somebody was doing the clip art, and they're like, why not look like these guys? You should get your lawyer on the phone. Yeah, I'm like, get me out of there. The coat is shorter. That's the only difference between me and the drawing is the coat in real life goes way down and here it comes up to, it's like a hip coat or something like that. Well, he's so warm because he has solar panels. He doesn't need the full length coat. There we go, sir. Nick, here you go. Cheers. Happy birthday. Ah. Give him your name, sir. Nick. Nick, happy birthday, sir. Thank you so much. Happy birthday, Nick for the shot. And I'm sorry about the other thing, but I'm sure the other shot of tequila won't go to waste. <laughs> yeah, it's yours. That's what I thought. What's uh, your last name, Nick? Bergelin. What? Bergelin? Bergelin? <laughs> Is it really? Spell it. B-E-R-G-E-L-I-N. B-E-R-G-L-I-N? G-E-L-I-N? Bergelin. Yeah. Bergelin. <laughs> your middle name's not turd, is it? <laughs> Nick Turdberglin would be a bad name. That is an excellent last name, man. All you have to do in life is not that. But how do you not do it when it's your name? <laughs> totally. I would so be a burglar if my name was Berglin. Totally. What, what are you do doing? You do? Just Berglin. Yeah. I didn't have much of a choice. What do you do for a living, Nick? What do you think? <laughs> hey, what are you in for? <laughs> Question they never have to ask him when he's in prison. This comes from Eileen in Norway. Jeez, it's cool. People write from all over the world. Um, listener from Norway here. Wanted to let you know that because of stupid American drinking laws, you two better keep HBO alive until February 2014 so I can come to the United States and drink with you. Because let's be honest, what's HBO without alcohol? <laughs> a lot less funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when I get my ass over there, I demand a shout out for traveling over 8,000 miles. That's from Eileen in Norway. Do you think we can do this till 2014? Um, yeah, man. I'm prepared. What is it, 11 now? It's only three more years. We haven't even celebrated our one-year anniversary yet. I think it's August, right? We started? It's coming up. Yeah. We're, I mean, we haven't... Uh, we've been broadcasting pretty consistently, but we haven't... Yeah, well, some of us have. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. I don't think we're going to make it to our first <laughs> birthday. I think we've got about 10 weeks, man. We've got to figure out what it is and make sure we do a birthday celebration. I think we may be in Vegas. You know what we should do, actually? This is fucking weird, um, but it's very spur of the moment. You know, we're moving everything up here now. Uh, this show was born in a little, a little space not too far from here called Smod Castle. Right. And Smod Castle, we're closing down and reopening up here on the top floor because this is where we spend all of our time now. So Smod Castle closes, I think, uh, uh, J- July 1st. So... I was thinking about maybe doing uh, one last show there to close out the space. There's only 50 seats, yeah. so it'd be pretty, you know, the, the, we'll put up tickets for sale this week. For like $200 a piece, though, right? Yes. Yeah. It'll be a We're not going to lose money on the ticket. deal. No, 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 no. But it feels like we should honor the space where the show was born before it goes goodbye forever. Yeah. So look for, look for that uh, this week. If you want to come up and see that. I used to have to bring my own liquor to that theater, yes, remember? Yes, yeah. I know. It was fucked up. That I used was to rough. have to bring my own times. weed. <laughs> <laughs> that was great, though. It was, a really, it was the, that space birthed this show, and this show brought us up here, and, and we enjoyed doing this every fucking week. While I was gone, I missed it so much. But it feels like let's honor the space before it goes away. All right. All right, let's do it. Probably Wednesday. I'm thinking Wednesday. I'm in. All right. Uh, this email comes from Seth. His name is? I'm sure he missed the J on the keyboard. Whose name's Seth? I don't know, but I'm thinking. Uh, he writes, while you were gone, Kevin, well, you were here when we did the uh, Back to the Future penis point with that creepy kid from yes. that movie, right? We showed that video. While you were gone, we also did the uh, Star Wars boob grab where Han grabs Princess Leia's boob in Jedi. I didn't see that. You never saw that one? No, no, no. Uh, where the, uh, it's, uh, while they're defending the... Um, 
the shield generator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, she gets hit, and yeah. she fakes like being injured, and he, yeah, she shoots and he goes, the guy. I love you. Yeah, but before that, when he grabs her, he to- full on grabs her tit while he's lowering her to the ground. <laughs> so just, yeah, yeah. Lowers so we, her by the boob, but with using the force. Exactly. Will. So we showed that clip. So now apparently it's a very popular feature because everyone is sending in other clips that we need to talk about. So uh, maybe we'll f- make this a segment too, called right the, the Easter Egg Hunt or something. But um, this comes from Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. During the final credits, apparently, they show the Marauder's map. And you know the Marauder's map shows the footprints of where everyone where is? Where everybody and, is in Hogwarts. Right. Uh, in the lower left-hand corner on your screen as we watch this, they show two sets of footprints that are totally at the missionary position and going at it and having sex <laughs> during the closing credits of Harry Potter. So I brought in the video for everyone to look at. We'll show it a couple times and we'll zoom in, but they're totally fucking on the map. <laughs> Someone snuck it in and figured no one would notice, but we did notice, and here it is. (laughs) Rerun it, lower left-hand corner, right there. There they go, they're going at it. One more time in close-up, here we go. (laughs) Yeah, with sound effects added. Totally fucking at Hogwarts. That is awesome. I think, it, I think it's Harry and Ron, though. That's the only problem. <laughs> oh, you know they're doing it. I like it. that segment. Let's call it uh, Hollywood Babylon shit that should not be. All That's right. the name That's for it. That's it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Good at naming stuff. Um, this comes from Scotland. Apparently, Kevin, they are making a movie about us in Scotland. They're making a small independent feature based on Hollywood Babylon. This comes from listener uh, Thomas Towner. Actually, he's from London. Saw this and thought of you guys. It's an advertisement for actors for a short film made in Scotland about you guys in Babylon. Perhaps you could audition and see how far you get. (laughs) This is a screen grab of the ad they put on the internet. It's something called Star Now. And it says, Kevin Smith lookalike wanted for online short in Edinburgh, Scotland. And it says, the show will follow Kevin and Ralph as they attempt to deal with the abomination they have created, an entity simply known as the fame whore. (laughs) Applicants must be heavily built, bearded, and be able to do a New York, New Jersey accent in order to play the fictional version of Kevin Smith. Then in smaller print it says, Ralph Garman also required. (laughs) I don't have an accent though. You don't really. No. No. Here's the second shot of the, the exact specifications for the actors. To play Kevin Smith, you must be a male, aged 18 to 99. <laughs> Thought I was looking better. No previous acting experience required to play Kevin Smith. Fair enough. The uh, description for Ralph Garman, Ralph is a whiskey-drinking, leather coat-wearing wise-ass. First of all, I only wear the leather coat when it's cold out. I'm not like Fonzie, I don't go, I don't... I don't go water skiing in it. I don't, I don't go on the beach with it. You are like Fonzie. The more I think about it, your leather jacket cool, your hair looks like Fonzie. Every time I see you, the first thing you say is, hey. <laughs> Sit on it, Kevin. Uh, no previous acting experience to play me either. So if you're in Edinburgh, you might want to apply and see if you can be in the new movie about me and Kevin. Which I think we also have to get our lawyers on, because that seems, that seems wrong. If it, it would be a very expensive joke for us to show up and be like, uh, we'd like to try out for, I would awesome. like to try out for Ralph Garman. I'd like, I'll be playing the role of Kevin Smith? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, lastly, the more video clips from uh, Disneyland's Disney Days. We played one a couple weeks ago, I guess it was, with Chewbacca dancing to Sweet Child of Mine, I think it was, mm-hmm. from uh, Guns N' Roses. Mm-hmm. And you were stoned enough to think you might have been hallucinating it. Yes. Yeah. Well, Jason apparently liked that so much, he sent us another clip. Apparently at Disneyland, they have these Disney Days, and one of the events that they do is they have the cast members come out in full regalia, and they dance to weirdly inappropriate songs. Right. So last time we brought you Chewbacca dancing to uh, Sweet Child of Mine. Tonight we bring you Darth Vader embarrassing himself to Can't Touch This. <laughs> James? Can't touch this. Oh, 
He's not quite so scary when he's doing those moves. That fucking rocked. That was amazing. I can't even make fun of it. That is so fuck. Why? How come nobody's ever done that before? That was a no-brainer. Take a hammer song, put Vader in it. <laughs> Vader time. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is a bad week for this segment. Tinseltown Stiffs, a lot of good people passed this week. Yeah, but yeah. we have to give them their just desserts. This is not the funniest part of the show, but we do like to give them a little bit of a tribute as we say goodbye to some people that we're uh, all fans of with a segment we call Tinseltown Stiffs. And now, another edition of Tinseltown Stiffs. They will be missed. They will be missed. Are you eating her food? <laughs> that's just a fry. I mean, technically, that's not eating her food. That's just a fry. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, sad news this week. Ryan Dunn of Jackass fame passed away this week. Yeah, it was a, a horrible story. Just a, bad on every level. He had just turned 34 years old. He was with his 30-year-old friend, Zachary Hartwell, who was in the car with him. They, unfortunately, he was drinking and driving. His blood alcohol content was almost double, two and a half times the legal limit. They say he was driving about 130 miles per hour in his Porsche when he went through the guardrails of a highway and burst um, into flames, hit a tree. Just a horrible, horrible uh, accident. And, uh, of course, he was great in Jackass. Uh, very entertaining, and it, it's a shame that uh, he, he had to pass in such a horrible way. But at least the Westboro Baptist Church made things better. They announced this week that any public funeral ceremony for Dunn will be picketed by the church. Uh, they mentioned that he is a drab pervert who hawked porn-level filth to get rich from a perverse generation. To which I would ask... <laughs> well, then... <laughs> One more time. Read their description. <laughs> All right. The WBC said he was a drab pervert who hawked porn-level filth to get rich from a perverse generation. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, fuck Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, fucking nothing else makes more sense. <laughs> to which I say, if that's wrong, I don't want to be right. <laughs> I know. I'm right there with him, so uh, he will be missed. He will be missed. Big bucket of win there for Ryan. Uh, also this week, Larry Wildman Fisher passed away. You may not all know the name, but he was a legend in what they called outsider music. This guy was actually mentally ill. He was living on the streets of the Sunset Strip in the 60s, and Frank Zappa found this guy and decided to make him a rock star. Now, if you ever listened to a show called The Dr. Demento Show back in the day, there used to be a single on that, that Dr. Demento played all the time called My Name is Larry. Do you remember that song? That was Larry the Wild Man Fisher. But Zappa made a two-album set, a, an album with this guy back in the 60s, and it actually made him a celebrity. He was mentally ill. He would make up his, his songs on the spot, the, the hit, for lack of a better description, for the song that was, he was best known for was a thing called Merry-Go-Round. So if you don't know uh, Larry Fisher's work, here's a little taste of Merry-Go-Round. Come on, let's merry-go, merry-go, merry-go-round. Merry-go, merry-go, merry-go-round. can go merry-go-round. Still better than Willow Smith, in my opinion. <laughs> Still better than whip my hair back and forth. <laughs> His cult status uh, led him to open for Solomon Burke, The Birds, and Alice Cooper in concert. He used to open for them. Can you imagine going to an Alice Cooper show and seeing that guy sing for 40 minutes? There we go. It sounds like the, the Burger King, McDonald's <laughs> yeah, person. The fries girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, apparently, these fall, he had a falling out with Zappa after he went crazy and threw a jar at Frank Zappa and almost hit his baby moon unit at the time and that's ooh, when ooh. Frank decided to part ways with the crazy wild man Fisher but uh, he passed away this week as well uh, comic book fans know this name Gene Colan passed away this week mm -hmm. he was a legend in the business he uh, was a great great artist did Dracula drew Batman in the 80s Daredevil for his, his run on Daredevil is one of the definitive Daredevil runs of all time uh, Howard the Duck he yep. was the artist for Howard the Duck his work on Tomb of Dracula was famous for Marvel Comics as well. He also, he was, uh, he was my favorite Iron Man artist. Here's a, co a cover he drew. This was uh, Iron Man number one that he did the work for. He passed away at the age of 84 years old this week. So that's a big bucket of win, Big right? bucket of win, man. Beautiful work to find those characters. Uh, a lot of what we know about him and see today is based on that dude's work. I have a piece of Karen Page a page of Karen Page that he did. In our Daredevil run, we killed off the character of Karen Page, and 
Uh, Jimmy and Joe, uh, the guys that I did the run with, they gave me a, a Gene Colan page, and it was original page. art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's cool. That's nice. Uh, more comic book art. News, uh, an artist named Lou Sarah Schwartz, he was a Batman artist, died at the age of 84. He was one of the ghost artists for Bob Kane, who right. created the Batman, of course. Uh, when he was originally drawing the strip, the workload got too big for Bob Kane, so they would farm it out to other guys, but Bob would still sign his name to it. Isn't that nice? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lou Sarah Schwartz was one of those guys. Did a ton of work from 48 to 53. This is one of his covers, one of the uh, all-time greats. That's the Red Hood there, of course, yeah, the character was come back. Of course, later on, they used that in the killing joke. That's, that's a right. joker under that hood. Yep. So, uh, 84 years old also. Big bucket of win for him. Huge bucket of win. And oh, this one is this the biggest one hurt. bucket of win of the week. This one hurt. Peter Falk, TV's Columbo, died this week. <laughs> the age of 83 years old. First played Columbo in 1968 in a TV movie, then it became a regular TV series from 71 to 1976, and then sporadically after that from 89 to 2003. Just a great, great actor. This dude is a, is a huge bucket of wins. He's an Obi-Wan Kenobi, this guy. He, <laughs> just unbelievable the life he's had and the work he produced. The In-Laws, if you've never seen The In-Laws, uh, this is a brilliant performance by, by this man. Also, Alan Arkins in the movie is also fucking brilliant, but... Really, really funny stuff. The one remake, of the funniest movies still it. to this day, in my opinion. One of my favorite comedies. When he's like, For serpentine, serpentine. Serpentine shell, serpentine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, he, of course, was known for Columbo with his famous moment. Murder by death. Murder by death, yeah. Right. Um, right. Princess, Bride. Princess Bride, of course. Princess he was the grandpa. Bride, Princess that's Princess right. Bride. Most people know him from Princess Bride. You don't want to hear the rest of the story. Yeah. <laughs> As um, you wish. As you wish. Oh, uh, I did bring in a little clip. I'm glad you brought up uh, In-Laws because that was the clip I brought tonight to show. This is, if you haven't seen the film, do yourselves a favor. Go out there and Netflix it or, or pick it up. It's, a, it's a very funny. And it's so crazy. It's so harebrained. It's so out there. It's, it's a wonderful flick. Both of these dudes are comedic geniuses in their performances. And it, it holds up. It's a movie clearly it's shot in the 70s, but it'll hold up. It, it really it, it works now as well. Falk plays a guy who's a CIA agent who meets Alan Arkin, who is a dentist. And they're brought together because their kids are getting married, hence the name The In-Laws. And uh, through a series of wacky circumstances, Arkin is drawn into this caper that Peter Falk is, is running. Alan they... Arkin gets to play both the straight man and like the lead funny guy as well. Yeah. Because he's his, reactions. To, his reactions are fucking priced. This movie is fantastic. If you haven't seen it, go out and get it right now. They end up down in South America in this <laughs> tiny little banana republic. It's run by a dictator played by Richard Libertini, who is yes. also hilarious in it, who talks with his hand all the time. <laughs> and uh, at the end, uh, towards the end of the film, they're in front of a firing squad. And it's the end. It looks like they're going to be finished. And Alan Arkin turns to Peter Falk and says, you're, you're the CIA agent. What are you going to do to get us out of this? And Peter's like, I don't know. You got any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> is this so, where he breaks down? Alan Arkin's like, no, breaks this down? Is the, this is the this is the impassioned speech Peter Falk gives to the dictator trying to <laughs> save the life of his friend Shelley. This man, Sheldon Cornpet, Shelley, I call him. He's a great dentist from New York. A city in which... As you probably know, General, there are thousands of Spanish-speaking people who stand in dire need of extensive bridge work. And this man's death, I'm afraid, would be a crushing blow to whatever small hopes they might have for a healthier set of teeth and gums. That was it? The dental thing? I'm a dentist! The dental thing? That was it? What a loss. What a great, great actor Huge he was. bucket of win. We'll miss yeah. you, Peter Falk. All right, let's move on to the HBO headlines. I'm surprised you guys are here tonight, actually. I thought you'd be out uh, somehow commemorating the second anniversary of Michael Jackson's passing. Tonight is the night, two years ago on this night. He was uh, given, a, you know, an appropriate dose of propofol. If you're That's Dr. Conrad two, Murray. Two fucking years? Two years since he passed, yeah. The reason I bring it up is because one of the headlines this week was that Channel Island Helicopters announced that they are giving his fans a chance to toss a single red rose out of a helicopter over the Neverland Ranch tonight and the all weekend long. So if you haven't booked your flight yet, you can go on there with a single red rose. They will fly you over Neverland Ranch and you can just drop the rose out over his, his favorite place to live. Uh, the company rep promises you'll be closer to heaven and to Michael in the helicopter. It's only $175 per person, 500 bucks for three. So uh, you still have time to book. 
It sounds like you're, you could drop a rose and sensible money out. <laughs> Just throw cash yeah, out the window. Yeah, yeah. I have booked my flight. I am going to uh, sprinkle uh, young boys' p uh, pants, uh, underwear, <laughs> out the window as a fitting tribute to Michael. I will, I will douse Neverland Ranch with underwear. <laughs> I think that's how Michael would have wanted it. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan in the news this week, as she is every week. This week, she had to go to court because she failed an alcohol test. They came to her house where she is under house arrest. They tested her for alcohol. They considered that a violation of her probation. They hauled her ass into court. Turns out they were wrong, and she was right. Uh, the judge ruled that she was only required to undergo controlled substance testing, and even then, only from January until February. So apparently, Lindsay can drink all she wants as long as she doesn't drive after she drinks. However, the judge did say that she had an ass full of all the parties going on at her house in Venice. And so she put a new order in place. No more parties at Lindsay's house. Only one visitor at a time is allowed. And uh, Lizzie said that's fine as long as that visitor could be her drug dealer. That's all she said. <laughs> The I judge can't remember, said, has she, has she gotten in trouble or not? Because it sounds like she could do anything she wants. She's under house arrest, which means she has to stay in her house, which is a lovely condo in Venice that overlooks the beach. And only party with one person. Now she can only party with one person at a time. Yeah. What it is, is like a real Sophie's choice for her. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> Who do you choose? Totally. Who am I going to get fucked up with today? <laughs> the judge said the only thing Lindsay was guilty of was extremely poor judgment. I bet Lindsay felt bad. <laughs> glug, 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 glug. Well, that washed that away. Uh, the only person who apparently isn't invited into her house is Matt Lauer. He flew from New York from the Today Show to do an interview with Lindsay, and then when he got, when he got there, she said, no, no thanks. <laughs> now, apparently it has to do with this fact that she did fail the, the alcohol test, and she was embarrassed and didn't want to deal with that during the interview, but uh, Matt Lauer apparently was pissed off. He came all that way, and... Uh, didn't get to make her airtight with a couple of his friends. <laughs> if, I, if I heard this story correctly, I believe uh, she was, they were supposed to do an interview for the Today Show, mm -hmm. 15 minutes, but then he also said, hey, while we're here, we're doing it for this other show, one of the news magazine shows like Dateline or something like that. And that's when she was like, no, no, this is supposed to be for the Today Show. Because the Today Show would be a softball interview. Right. The other one would be more like, so, what the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> you know. So she didn't want to do the latter for some reason. Yeah. And um, that was why she was kind of like, no, no, I'm not going to do it. And she made him wait. And finally that dude was like, fuck it. And he left. Can you imagine, man? He's just like, I'm Matt Lauer. Fuck you. I'm leaving, man. I know Al Roker. Yeah. yeah. yeah I know people. Uh, while she's stuck in her house, she apparently is making some money. She filmed a commercial there this week for a company called Bzid.com. Bzid, for those of you who don't know, it's like a really shitty version of eBay where you pay up front like some sort of membership fee. They're not a sponsor or anything, are they? Are they really? They're a great, <laughs> they're a great version of eBay. That's what I meant to say. I had no idea. <laughs> you people are the only people who will ever hear that joke. <laughs> it will never exist outside of this room. <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, they haven't started yet. They're about to start. For whom? For uh, Jay and Silent Bob Get Jobs. Okay, well, then just ignore all that. <laughs> I like it. I'm leaving it in. <laughs> We'll probably lose them, but it's worth it. No, it's not. No, it's not. Save your sponsor. Kill the joke. It's no not, way, it's not really a joke, though. It's a shitty version of Easter. <laughs> but she did the commercial. Yes. And, and, uh, How apparently, much did she get paid? Well, they offered her $25,000, which initially she turned down, so apparently she got more than that. Plus, whatever she got in cash, she also got $10,000 in free stuff. Just in merch. In merch, yeah. Right on, man. But I think it's a great idea for them to get her because yeah. think of the commercial are you trapped in your home with an ankle bracelet <laughs> one of the things that really sucks about home arrest is you can't get out to shop that's why i like to go to bzid.com because there i can just buy 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 on the internet and i never have to leave my home so i party with one person <laughs> and together we get loaded and we just order shit off of bzid you should too i'm lindsey lohan and I'm airtight.
Thank you. Thank you so much. You can use that as the spot. Use that as the commercial for Beezit. Totally. I'm going to listen to this. <laughs> like, what was that first thing you said? Like, nothing, nothing. Listen to, the, listen to the airtight bit. That'll help you sell your family product. <laughs> While we're talking about uh, hot chicks who are marginally talented, Megan Fox was in the news this week. <laughs> Apparently, she was fired from the Transformers franchise, not by Michael Bay, but by executive producer Steven Spielberg. Whoa. Turns out, Spielberg did not care for her Hitler joke when it came to uh, director Michael Bay. She did an interview after the second um, movie, and she said, you know, Michael likes to be like Hitler on his set. And he is. He's a nightmare to work for. But when you get him away from the set, he's not in director mode. I really kind of enjoy his personality because he's so awkward, so hopelessly awkward, she added. Uh, Spielberg apparently heard the Hitler comment and insisted, according to Bay, who told this to the Daily Mail, you know the Hitler thing, Steven said fire her right now. So apparently that's why she lost her job, because of uh, bringing up Hitler when it came to Michael Bay. Whoa. Yeah. Spielberg said, Michael Bay is not Hitler. If anything, he's Mussolini, he said. <laughs> so it's not as bad, because Mussolini got the, the trains there on time yeah, and stuff. Yeah. He was the good dictator. Yeah. God, do you know how much it takes to piss off Steven Spielberg? Well, he's touchy about the whole Nazi thing. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, he doesn't like Nazis at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As opposed to all the people who really dig the Nazis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kim Kardashian, see we're going down the talent chain pool. <laughs> Little talented, not so talented, no talent. <laughs> Kim Kardashian, who will go to any length for a little free publicity, announced this week that she's tired of people saying that her butt isn't real. And you know, we're all saying it. If you go anywhere, you hear people saying, you know Kim Kardashian's butt? I don't think it's real. Yeah. Well, the other day I was pointing at her ass going, fraud! <laughs> <laughs> That was to your daughter, too, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, both of us. Uh, so she is finally putting this to rest. She grabbed her sister, Chloe, who has breast implants and a penis. <laughs> <laughs> and pulled her into the doctor's office and got x-rays of Chloe's fake boobs and her real ass to prove that there are no implants in her ass. And then released the photo to the public. And we wouldn't be a news organization, people, if we didn't bring you that photograph. Here's Kim Kardashian posing with the x-ray of her ass, proving that it's all real Armenian meat, people. <laughs> now, can we finally stop talking about her ass and get back to the deficit and the job situation and gay marriage, please? Thank you. I gotta tell you, man, she, I, I don't know much about her, but I do appreciate living in a world where that's news. Because that means nothing else is going on, man. Like, nothing pressing. Like, imagine so if you okay? were in Japan. They don't have, like, a Kim Kardashian x-ray ass story. They're like, we're trying not to die here. Yeah. There's radiation everywhere. We're like, really? In America? We're still worried about this idiot. Yeah. They're trying to get rid of radiation. She's taking radiation <laughs> to prove that her ass is real. In Japan, like, really? Really? Radiation is not good. Why you put it in your ass? You should stop that. We got plenty here. Come over here. We're, we're x-ray your ass for nothing. You walk down the street, it's like x-ray. I'm getting emails. <laughs> that, was, that was more Kim Jong-il than... <laughs> The Japanese at all. A Japanese is more like, oh, Kim Kardashian ass most honorable. I stand corrected, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're gonna fucking use racial stereotypes, <laughs> get it right. Get it right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sad news this week. One of my favorites got into trouble with the law. Tone Loke. Tone Loke's in trouble. <laughs> Funky cold Medina. <laughs> yeah, apparently Tone got in trouble when he roughed up the uh, daughter, excuse me, the mother of his child. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad enough, dude. I don't. Know. I don't know. Make don't it make worse. it worse. No, he just roughed up the mother. It's cool. <laughs> it's fine. She was an adult. He just roughed her up. That's uh, how you get a lead with that story. Like he beat a kid. Like no. Like no, no, no. Just a woman. <laughs> it's cool. Let's hit it. 
Uh, the mother of his child apparently was roughed up in Burbank. Oh. Firstly, I was shocked because I was like, there are black people in Burbank? <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know is what I'm saying. I didn't say it's a bad thing or a good thing. I'm just saying I didn't know. Take that joke right to its racist edge. Do it in the Kim Jong-il voice. <laughs> Tarnock live in Burbank? I can't believe that. I didn't even know the head and the chocolate face in Burbank. Do me a favor, put that in the BZ file, eh? <laughs> I'm not sure I want that one out there in the world either. Uh, Tone, of course, had two huge hits in the 80s, Wild Thing and Funky Cold Medina. He's being held on $50,000 bond. Why don't you just make it $40 billion? Because <laughs> Tone has snorted away all that Wild Thing money a long, long time ago. Is he really? Is oh, he, he's broke. He's yeah. one of those cats? Yeah. Shouldn't he's, be hitting people, particularly broke. a woman. Tone broke is what they should call it. <laughs> Ooh. Put Tone that in the beast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tone broke her nose. <laughs> More music news. Mariah Carey. I didn't mean to step on that. I'm sorry. It took, me, right. it took a while right. to get to this side of the table. Right. I'm not like, proud of it. I don't think, you know, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't think yeah. domestic violence is anything to laugh at. But Tara don't. liked it. Yeah, it was yeah. good. Right? <laughs> She's still here, people are listening. The roller derby girl's still here on stage with us. Sometimes I forget and I look over and say, who's that? Oh, it's Tara. She's a blocker, man. She's stopping anybody from getting up here. <laughs> she us is. Up. Jamming us, if you will. Now we know my, why Mariah Carey had her twins. It's about time they started fucking earning a little money. <laughs> Mariah Carey is shopping around the photos of her children, Moroccan and Monroe. To the highest bidder, her and, uh, who's her husband? Nick, Nick Cannon, Cannon, right? <laughs> Nick Cannon. What's that? Mr. Mariah, yes. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Mariah are looking to get big, big money for pictures of Moroccan and Monroe, but apparently they've been disappointed because nobody wants to pay big money for Moroccan and Monroe because no one cares, madam, exactly. That's why you're right. Uh, so far, 200 grand apparently is the biggest offer they've got for the kids. That, that is nobody That's caring? a disappointment for 200 them. 200 grand? Yes. They were looking for Brangelina money. Uh, they have set the bar, Brad and Angelina. Apparently, they sold their photos of Shiloh for $1 million. But they gave it all to charity. I don't think Mariah and Nick Cannon are giving their money away to charity. They just want it for the sake of having it. Yeah, exactly. Man, I can't, like, fucking give my kid's picture away. <laughs> They're actually thinking of charging? How much? 200 grand is the low? That's, that's, that's what they're disappointed and that's what they're being offered if right I now. If I was them, I'd be like, can you believe somebody's going to give us $200,000 in cash? These pictures of this fucking, this cum that became a human? <laughs> <laughs> that came out of my dick and your pussy? This is crazy. I don't think that's the conversation they're having. That's the conversation I'd be having. I know, but that's not the conversation. I'd having. be really high when I was having it, but that's what it's all about. It's crazy. And they couldn't name him anything more fucked up to make it more interesting. Moroccan, that's pretty interesting. I want to see a picture of someone named Moroccan. I've never seen a Moroccan before. Moroccan well, I've seen stuff. a Moroccan, but not a person <laughs> named Moroccan. <laughs> Justin Bieber's got problems. <laughs> Other than the fact that everyone in this room hates him, he's got problems. Uh, apparently, Justin's latest problem is teenage girls keep stealing his underwear. <laughs> Ugh, I've had that problem for years, yeah. Ralph. You and me both, amigo. That's why I started going commando. <laughs> Can't steal this, can you? It's it attached. It disappoints and yet delights the thief. <laughs> Gotta so, look, look out for those dudes who might be burgling. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Call back. Uh, so Justin has come up with a unique solution, according to AbsoluteNow.com, the entertainment news website. Uh, Justin is now burning all of his underwear after just one wearing. Oh, that's like some fucking like Pharaoh chic kind of shit, man. That's a, that doesn't sound real, really. Well, let's ask him. Justin, are you really burning your underwear after just one wearing? Fuck yeah! <laughs> I don't want him to see the bacon stains. Oh, Justin. I don't oh. have time to wipe. No, Justin. 
Get some moist towelettes or something. <laughs> That'll fix that problem. So for wait, you. he just doesn't want his panties falling into the enemy's hands? <laughs> yes. It, so the he's being women. <laughs> Kind of, right? It's, uh, it's weirding him out, so he, well, he's going to have them burned now after he wears them. That's just, that's a little much, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. I hope he's still in them while he sets fire to them. That's all I ask. <laughs> get him off! Get him off! He's smooth like a Ken doll down there. Nothing's going to happen. Don't worry about it. <laughs> while we're talking about clothing and celebrities, Jennifer Lopez had a wardrobe malfunction this week. She was appearing on German television. <laughs> This is a confusing story because it's a German TV show that was filming in Spain. Get your shit together, Europe. <laughs> Figure out who you are and where you're filming. So, Don't leave your respective countries. <laughs> right. Stay there so we know where to find you. Yeah, really. Uh, they were shooting at a bullfighting arena, and she was wearing a very flowing dress, and apparently the wind was whipping around. And it started to be one of those Marilyn Monroe moments where it was going to whip up. And so the host tried to push her dress down. And while doing so, while she was doing it too, her boob slipped out. And, <laughs> what? and everyone on German television was watching live saw Jennifer Lopez's right tit. <laughs> really? Yes. And we wouldn't be a news organization yeah. if we didn't bring you a picture of Jennifer Lopez's right tit falling out of her dress. For those of you who have never seen a nipple, we have a close-up. There you go. That's Jennifer Lopez's right nipple, everyone. It's so fucking weird, man. I don't care how old you are. I don't even care if it's like someone you know. You see nipple you're not supposed to, you're like, that's amazing. It's the hottest nipple you've that ever is. seen. It's like, I, like, I've never seen a nipple before. It's like, that what it looks like? I'm like, I literally want to jerk off right now. Oh, stop it. <laughs> I'm just Carrie, you may it. want to go back to your seat in the audience now. <laughs> we got a little while. <laughs> Thank God it didn't happen on American television because we'd have to shut down all the networks again like we did after Janet Jackson. No the Germans were like, so we don't care. <laughs> they said, nipple, we don't care. We start another world war, we don't care. <laughs> Why don't you x-ray her ass and see if it's real? <laughs> Yeah, but it's that with her ass. Everyone's not asking questions. That's the curious ass. <laughs> Tell us about the ass. We are very self making you talk about the ass. <laughs> While we're talking about the dresses being blown up by wind, the Marilyn Monroe's dress that she wore in the famous movie The Seven Year Itch, that's the classic Marilyn Monroe scene where she is walking with that married dude played by actor Tom Hewell. That's another movie that stands up, by the way, that film. It's very kind of sweet. It's very dated, 1950s. But uh, they're walking along. It's very hot summer in New York, and no one has air conditioning because it's the olden times. <laughs> and she's uh, standing in front of a subway grate, on top of a subway grate, rather, and, the, and the, the train goes by, and it blows her dress up, and she holds it down, but she gets a nice cool breeze in her cunt. <laughs> Never thought about it, but that's what that that's scene what she's is doing. about. That's yeah, what she's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, she's like, oh, my vagina's so sweaty and hot. Oh, this cool breeze makes it feel much better. That's what she's saying. That's her subtext. That's her inner monologue. I thought that was the cut scene no. or something like that. So that dress, the one she wore in that scene, went on up for auction this week. And I'm, I'm a collector. I collect uh, 1960s Batman stuff, right? So I'm like a collectible. Oh. And I, I get into this stuff when I see what happens. And I, and I have some interest, but I usually don't report on it because no one else really cares. Because it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird niche world, the world of collectibles. But this thing was worth talking about. This dress sold this week for $4.6 million. Yeah, but that makes sense to me. It's iconic. It's an iconic piece of wardrobe. Everyone, uh, mostly everybody, maybe not so much of a current generation, but a lot of people know that fucking dress. Whoever bought it, man, it's kind of an investment. And they can put it but on it's display. Four point six million dollars. But she, she, Marilyn Monroe, who is like even like 30, 40 years after her death, is still a cult, a pop cultural icon. Right. Wore that dress. I don't know if you heard me though. Four point six million dollars. I'm with you. I think it, it, even weirder is who owned the dress. Debbie Reynolds. Isn't that weird? How did she, Debbie Reynolds, how did, how did Princess Leia's mother wind up with Marilyn Monroe's dress? Here's the thing, Debbie Dude, Reynolds. this. No, 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 no. <laughs> no doubt, man. I'm not sure that's how she got it. I think she may have purchased it from an auction that Fox had getting rid of their wardrobe. I think my version is sexier. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Let's ask the Swedes. What do you think, Swedes? Oh, they're fucking. Never mind. Let's not interrupt them. <laughs> 
Debbie Yo. Reynolds, this actress, for those of you who don't know, she is Carrie Fisher's mom, but she was also a huge movie star in the 50s. Apparently took all of her money, and she used to do a lot of touring and singing and dancing shows and nightclubs and stuff. Took all of her money and bought shit with it, like collectible stuff. Costumes, props, all this stuff. And they're finally auctioning off all of her stuff, and it's worth, obviously, $4.6 million for Just one for dress. Just for one dress. Another Marilyn Monroe dress went for $1.7 million. The one she wore in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. Oh, where she's singing Diamonds are a Girl's Best Friend. Right, know? that dress. Uh, Judy Garland's ruby slippers from The Wizard of Oz that she wore in the rehearsals and the early shoots before they decided to go with a different set of ruby slippers that ended up in the movie. Follow that if you want, fuckers. <laughs> Essentially, these are sho just shoes. These are, these are ruby slippers that never showed up in the movie The Wizard of Oz. Right. They sold for $1.75 million. That would be like, at one point, you were going to wear a different shirt in Red State, and I was like, give them a brown shirt, and they gave you a brown shirt. Right, so I took the other one, and I just put it in a drawer. <laughs> and made $1.75 million, $1. million dollars off a of good God. Yeah. Charlie Chaplin's bowler only went for 135000 That makes no sense That's to me. That's fuck I you, imagine. Charlie Chaplin, silent yeah. movie fucker. That's what that is. And Elizabeth Taylor, the outfit she wore in National Velvet. This is the movie that made her a star when she was like 12 or 13. That went for $73,000, which shows that everyone's glad she's dead. <laughs> not what that shows at all, is it? No. No, my bad. All right. Uh, Glee in the news this week. Really? There are still Glee fans? When did we start letting 12-year-olds in the audience? That's what I want to know. No. I started watching Glee. I liked it initially. Now I'm sort of off the Glee bandwagon. You're done Gleekin? Yeah, I'm done Gleekin. But the producer this week announced that his cast is going to graduate next year. They've been on the air for three seasons. They started off as sophomores, whatever. When they're done their time in the high school, they're gone. They're out, and they're going to bring a whole new bunch of kids in to be in the Glee Club. Okay. Which, uh, oh, in a related story, all the kids from Glee killed themselves this week. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure they'll go on to excellent careers after the show. So the teachers get to stay? They get to stay. Finally, it pays off to be old in show business for yeah, once in a really. while. Good for Jane Lynch. Jane Lynch's like, yes, I'm an old lesbian and I get to keep my job. Good is for she her. she lesbian? Oh, yeah. Is she really? Oh, yeah. Good for her. It's not like a secret. I'm not outing her. She's had a longtime <laughs> wife and everything. And oh, she's really? She's happy. Yeah. Um, interesting news this week about Jeff Conaway, who uh, we lost three and a half weeks Played ago, Kinnicky I guess. Played in Greece. Right. Also was on Taxi. His friend, and I put this in quotes, is talking to the press saying that Jeff committed suicide. Jeff Cohen is his name. He said that he believes, he doesn't believe it, he's, he's insisting that Jeff Conaway committed suicide because he was in so much pain and so miserable with his addiction that he ordered an undetectable suicide drug from Canada. And that's how he did the deed. That's why they never found it in the autopsy. Because Canada has a secret suicide drug. <laughs> I always knew they couldn't be trusted, those fucking Canadians, with their undetectable suicide drug. What's this the guy only, talking about? The only suicide drug that I'd ever want from Canada is boxes and boxes of Timbits. <laughs> yes. They make donuts there. Their donuts are called... Uh, Tim Hortons is their donutaria, and they make these little, like Munchkins, Dunkin' Donuts versions of Munchkins, but they're called Timbits, and I would... That's how I would go. Or Putin. Putin, which is like poutine. French fries dumped... P poutine, yeah. Dumped with uh, cheese on top of it and gravy. gravy. Cheese curds and gravy. Essentially, it's like di disco fries for us back yeah. east. That's uh, their version of disco. And that's a suicide protein. drug right there. You eat that and your heart will stop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those cheese curds are thick, man. All right, my favorite stuff of the week is in this next section, celebrity relationship news. Daniel Craig and Rachel Weisz got married this week. What? I brought you some news, bitches. <laughs> How about that? Usually it's like, oh, dance, funny monkey, dance. But now I bring you some actual news. This just broke today, motherfucker. Right on, man. <laughs> I am plugged the fuck in. <laughs> Daniel Craig and Rachel Weisz got married. If you're Darren Aronofsky, the director, who was with Rachel Weisz, the beautiful, by, oh, stunning. Yes, this guy said, oh, fuck, and I agree. <laughs> beautiful and talented. She's really good, the whole package. He was with her for seven years. and I'm sorry, nine years. And then she broke up with him, and now she's married to Daniel Craig just months after they started dating. You got to say, Phew. I'm cool with that, right? Yeah. Daniel Craig, he's, he's, he's the guy, right? Yeah, 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 she just wants something better than me. That's all. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they got married. She is 41, he is 43. Apparently, they got married in a very small ceremony in New York this week, so congratulations to Daniel Craig and Rachel Weisz. 
Miss Rachel Weiss. You are married to James Bond. Yeah. All right. Soft and... Oh, I thought you were going <laughs> to... I was going to harmonize with away. you. No, I was going to want to come in under you. You know, I played Captain Von Trapp in Sound of Music. Did we cover this already? You just literally rolled over. I just wanted to come in under you. <laughs> and you're so busy hawking a performance from 30 years ago. Goddamn comic didn't well, even hear a big ass joke like that. He's like, did I tell you that I played Captain Von Trapp when I was 14? I brought some footage from that performance. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll fix that in post. Uh, a couple that's not doing as well as Rachel Weiss and uh, Daniel Craig are Camille and Kelsey Grammer. You know, they split up. They divorced. She was. I was on the NHL awards uh, this oh, week. Oh, that's right. You gave, gave away the award. Norris, right? She was there, too. I had no idea why. The, she was on the Real Housewives or whatever. Yeah, play. Beverly Hills. She, uh, they presented an award. So the whole time, there was somebody there who was like, that looks like Frazier's mother. And it was, uh, <laughs> uh, and it was this lady. She's upset with Kelsey Grammer because apparently there was an email that went out this week from Kelsey Grammer's account that said, Camille smells like beef jerky. <laughs> All of her friends and business associates got the email, but Kelsey is claiming that it wasn't from him. He says other people had access to his password and he refuses to apologize. Again, dude. I'm, I'm glad we live in a world where this is a fucking news story, where it's just like, it's not like he even called her a fucking, he, she smells like a fucking queef or something like that. He's like, she smells like beef jerky. That's like the uh, four-year-old's fucking insult. But that's why I think it did come from him, because it sounds so much like a Frasier line, doesn't it? Do it, do your Frasier. For God's sakes, Niles, the woman smells like beef jerky. <laughs> I buy it, that's you're what, right. That's what he would say. Yeah, yeah. But I've, to be fair, if you put, for God's sakes, Niles in front of anything... For God's sakes, Niles. Yeah. One smells like a queef. <laughs> yeah, it works. Anything you say, it does oh. work. Uh, George Clooney and Elizabeth the Canalis broke up this week. That's... The biling uh, president is very happy for that. Yeah, why does that make you happy? It's like, I got my chance at George. Well, I didn't... Yeah, George isn't Oh, suffering. you just think he should be free so he can fuck anyone he wants. <laughs> Look at that. What a team player you are. That's amazing. <laughs> I wish I had that kind of support in my life. He's like, break up with your wife so you can fuck all the women you want. I can, you do it for me. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the gray foxes, they call him as a free man, ladies, so get in line. Apparently, they have released a statement this week saying it's very difficult, it's very personal, and they hope that everyone will respect their privacy. Nope. <laughs> Cannot make that guarantee. Um, she's hot though, that Elizabeth. I don't know who that is. She is a, an Italian. Uh, I guess she's he's been a, with her for a while. Yeah, a couple then of I years. I know who she. Yeah, all right. Yeah, if it's a TV same presenter or whatever. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. is pretty. She mentioned marriage. She mentioned marriage. You're right. She did bring up the M word. Is that right? She said, How do you know that? Oh, because it was in all the, the press. She said, I, I'm pro marriage. I'd like to be married someday. And George read that and said, Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm George fucking Clooney. <laughs> I forgot to fuck this girl over here. <laughs> Gotta go. Uh, Hugh Hefner has already found a rebound girl after his marriage broke up last week. Were you guys worried that Hef wouldn't have another girlfriend immediately after the other girl dumped him? I understand. Are they happy? Are you guys happy that he didn't get married or that he found someone new? Oh. <laughs> Who's this guy? Ed fucking McMahon? <laughs> He's very opinionated. Uh, though Hef finally is dating a woman who is older, which I think we're all happy for. His new girlfriend, Anna Berglund. Wait, Berglund? What? <laughs> Anna Berglund is 24 days older than his fiance, Crystal Harris. She's also 25, but she's just a little bit older. So she's more of an older woman. She's mature. It's about time he's dating somebody closer to his age. Here's a photo of Hef and his new girlfriend. Well, they seem like a happy couple. Hef tweeted this week, After all is said and done, maybe staying single is probably the best. I think I just missed a bullet. Your prostate's going to kill you before a bullet does, Hef. <laughs> Trust me. So, uh... <laughs> prostate kill you faster than a bullet, old man. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hef did the classy thing and he let uh, gold digging whore, I'm sorry, Crystal Harris. 
Keep her three carat diamond engagement ring. Let her keep the ring. 90K is what that ring is worth. You know how we know that's what it's worth? Because she tried to sell it this week in La Jolla. Really? She went to... I mean, I guess that's what you do, right? Well, not if you want to keep it. <laughs> Gentleman said he should have went to Jared's. Yeah, get a better deal at Jared's. You're right. Why can't Jared's be a sponsor? That was a good I, line. I don't know. They should jump on now. Wait, can we redo it and say that she should have gave her a man grade? <laughs> he should have gone on bzid.com. Yeah, there you go. There yeah. you go. Well done. She was in a La Jolla jewelry store down by San Diego this week, and she took off the ring and gave it to the dude and said, can I get an appraisal on this? I want to know how much it's worth. And so the guy said, I need to know what the documentation is. So the bitch has the balls to call the Playboy Mansion and say, I need the details about this ring because I'm looking to sell it. And the person on the other end said, we'll fax it to you, but we can't get it to you right away. And apparently she stormed out of the, uh, the, the store very upset that she couldn't sell the ring on the spot. Wow. Apparently, the guy who was waiting on them, this is according to witnesses, so take it or leave it for what it's worth, said, sorry to hear about the, the marriage going south. And she reportedly said, are you kidding? It was all for publicity. Oh, fucker! Yeah, but come on. I, I, hold on. Do you really think Fuck. that she's going to reveal her innermost secrets to the fucking guy she's trying to sell the ring to? Like, that sounds made up. A real, real smart girl like Crystal Harris? <laughs> You're right. You got a point. I'm sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. I Fair enough. My yeah. bad. And while we're talking about May-December romances, my favorite story of the week. <laughs> I'm so giddy. Familiar with an actor named Doug Hutchinson? Doug Hutchinson is 51 years old. He played Percy the guard in The Green Mile. He was also on Lost. He played, uh, what was the name of that character on Lost? Um, he was the head of the Dharma Initiative on Lost when they right. went back in time. Horace, Horace Goodspeed. Horace Goodspeed was his name. Dude is 51 years old. This week, he married, I shit you not, a 16-year-old girl. Her name is Courtney Alexis Stodden. They got married in Las Vegas this week. He is 51, maybe didn't hear me, she is 16 years old. Here is a photo of the lovely couple. All right, there's 16, and then there's 16, okay? She didn't look 16, man. No, she doesn't. No. He said in their statement, we're aware that our vast age difference is extremely controversial, but, we want, but we're very much in love, and we want the message out there that true love can be ageless, as can Viagra. Now, here's the thing. They had to get permission to get married via uh, Nevada law from one of her parents. And her mother signed off and said, my 16-year-old can get married to this 51-year-old man. She also made a statement. We are totally supportive of this marriage, Courtney's mom said. Doug is a wonderful man and we love him. She also added, Courtney was a virgin when she married Doug. She is a good Christian girl. She is a beautiful girl. She has real breasts, real lips. She's not plastic, Mom said. <laughs> that's because that it's her mother? That's her mother making that statement. Can we get another picture of Courtney up there just so we can look for ourselves, whether she's plastic or not? Oh, you're right. You're right. She is a good Christian girl. I would like my mother out there in the world going, Tiger has a big dick. <laughs> it's not plastic at all. Yes, and he's just big boned. <laughs> Apparently, Courtney is trying to launch a music career. Imagine that, indeed, madam. Aren't they all? Well, she could sing about how much she loves her grandfather. <laughs> um, and uh, our boy Hutchinson has a management company, mm. and he's managing her career. That's gotcha. how they got together. No. Now, she's got a new single out, people. And I wouldn't be doing you justice if I didn't bring you a little <laughs> taste of her video. The song is called Don't Put It On Me. Wait, wait, wait. I know. It's called Don't Put It On Me. I thought it was Don't Put It In Me. No, no. <laughs> Which would sound Apparently like she would has make no sense. problem with that. <laughs> oh. Don't Put It On Me, it's called. Um, this is going to run a little bit longer than our average clip here on Hollywood Babylon because there's a bit of you got to be fucking kidding me to this clip. And I want you to get over that so you can really enjoy the song. So here's a little bit of an elongated taste of the new video for Don't Put It On Me. When I go shopping, 
Holy fuck. There you go. 16 years old. I don't know about you. I thought she was going to fuck the dog on the boat. <laughs> I, I figured that was the next step. That looks like amateur porn. I just don't understand like, why people gave Rebecca Black such shit. Like, that video is one shot. It's yeah. her and a fucking pink dog that's just like, what's happening? <laughs> why are we in a boat? <laughs> why? What's going on? I'm a dog. I don't belong in the water. Yeah, I apologize to Rebecca Black. I really do. She clearly, uh, she clearly, clearly, clearly looks like a virgin. She's not a plastic girl. She's no, a good Christian girl. Very Christian. All right, a uh, couple... Jeez, we're running out of time, aren't we? All right, I'm going to try to... Um, I want to talk about the Academy of the Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. This is the people, the people who give out the Oscars every year. They've just announced they've invited 178 new people to join their ranks, which I think is a good idea. You want new blood in there. It's very impressive. They invite people from all different walks of life in the showbiz, in the movie industry. People I am do... a member. In 97, they invited me. You're a to member of the, uh, of the yeah. board. So you get to vote on all this stuff, right? Uh, and the, yeah, everything, but uh, my branch is director's branch, oddly enough. You don't get to vote for directors? My branch is director's branch, oddly enough. So, yeah, I definitely get so to vote for director's branch. So, you get to vote for director's branch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But you get to vote for the other stuff, too. Best picture. Everything. And all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they invited a bunch of people. This is what their statement said. They, uh, these are people who had distinguished themselves by their contributions to the theatrical motion pictures. Uh, these individuals are among the best filmmakers working in the industry today. They released the list of people who have been asked to join, and these are the new members. And I wanted to bring up a couple names in the actors category specifically, because just keep in mind when you're watching the Oscars and saying, this is fucking bullshit. <laughs> this is why, because these are the people they invited, okay? There are some names in here you can absolutely see, like Vincent Cassell, who I think is a great, great actor. He was in Black Swan. He played the, uh, the choreographer, the guy who ran that whole thing. Right, French guy, dude, French actor. French actor, done a ton of stuff, real high quality <laughs> stuff. However, Russell Brand is a new member of the Academy. Russell Brand, the man who gave you not only Get Him to the Greek, but Arthur, is a member of the Academy. He, I know he's fucking Katie Perry. You know what? Then put him in the Hot Pussy Academy, but don't put him in the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Don't you have to make a movie that's watchable before you become a member of the Academy? I mean, I mean, again, I got I inducted in 97, and I had made Mallrats. So I, that's... There are a lot of people who would say that I don't belong, but I don't, you didn't like Get Him to the Greek? I, it was fine, yeah. but, but Academy? But Academy, yeah. I mean, Jennifer Garner. Jennifer Garner is now in the Academy. Again, what? an Arthur, an Arthur <laughs> alumni. I know she was in Juno, but really just barely. <laughs> Ghost Town? Come on, people. You should be upset about this. Beyonce knows. I think, I think you've got to cover Beyonce Gold. knows. But wasn't she in Dreamgirls? Yeah, she that was, was a, singing like, and dancing. But it was an Oscar nominated pick. But it's just in the Academy. I understand. But it, of the names you've listed so far, at least she wasn't she nominated or yeah, she was nominated. For singing and dancing. But that one makes sense. She has sense, an actor. Too. She's in for an actor. Oh, we need Foxy Cleopatra in the fucking Academy. That's what they thought to themselves. Taya Leone is in the Academy now. Oh. David DeCompany's wife, that's how she's known. By the way, DeCompany's also in this year. Maybe they did a package deal. Maybe it's like, it's like a cruise or something. If you buy two, you get an extra stateroom. Oh, they ju he's just in this year? Yeah, David DeCompany's in. Hey. Beyonce Knowles. Oh, wait, let me look at the rest. Let me go down the list real quick. Russell Brand, Jerry Butler. All right. You Gerard know. Butler can understand. Yeah, I mean, this is the Academy. Yeah. Uh, oh, he did Coltrane. that thing with Jennifer Aniston, so they should pull him right out of the fucking Academy. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, what was that? The, the hit the, list? Or the bodyguard the or something? No, what the hell was it? I'm fucking Jennifer Aniston, the <laughs> That's movie. That's what it was called. Yeah. Yeah. Bradley Cooper. Uh, 
A movie star. You know, I can see because he's a movie star. John Corbett, man. Corbett's been around forever. I can see there's a guy who's done a ton of good performances and a ton of different kinds of films. I can see why they would induct a guy like him. They just want some hot cock in the Academy. That's why they brought him in. Peter Dinklage, he's in. Yeah. Now that's cool. Station agent. My, my midget friend Brad will tell you that's a cool thing. That's one for the midgets, Brad. Yeah, no, he's a midget. Hey, ask him. Brad, what are you? Thank you, sir. He's taking the word back. I feel he's taking you. it back. Yeah. Thomas Jane. Mila Kunis. Honestly, dude, she deserves it for uh, for getting Sarah Marshall. She was so fucking good she was in that movie. Good in that, yeah. And that was just showered with Oscars. <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence, she was nominated, so she's, she got an good. Anthony Mackie, he was in Hurt Locker. Yeah, it's all over the place a little bit. It's crazy. Yeah. Rooney Mara, that's the chick who's in uh, the new uh, Dragon Tattoo Dragon movie. Tattoo right? Dragon yeah. Tattoo movie. Did you see that poster? Yeah. Weird. It's like a boob on it. I know. It's like a Jennifer Lopez style boob. Just <laughs> flat out, like, look at my nipple. Like Ellen Page. She's no, for someone who does really good work with Juno and Inception and everything. She's, she's like an been, impressive yeah, actress. She's been nominated. Right, herself. so you can see why she would be included. But Dominic Monaghan, he was fucking Charlie and Lost. That's the only thing I know. Oh, he's in the game? Yeah. Oh, but he was in Lord of the Rings and that was nominated. Yeah. <laughs> Walked around looking for a place to throw the fucking ring. We know how that ends. Just saying. Oscars are bullshit. That's what I've decided. As opposed to the real award, which is the star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Let's talk about this, shall we, people? I am very happy for you. I saw this story earlier this week, and I was like, wow, this is, this is it, man. I don't know if you folks have heard or not, but after... After years and years, literally, you guys, you, you may or may not know, but I have been personally the guy behind the campaign to get this guy a star on the Rock of Fame. We got the news this week. But Adam West <laughs> will finally be enshrined on Hollywood Boulevard. I got an email this week from Adam West that said, Ralph, thank you. You are the guy who poured the cement for my star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. That'd be like, would, that would be like I Gretzky would, saying to you, you smoothed the ice with a Zamboni for my Stanley Cup. I would say you were more the Commissioner Gordon, man. You called and he came. That's you right. You summoned the Batman. So uh, That I, is fantastic. How old is this man? He is 82 years old. If, if, he should have had this star fucking 30 years ago, but yeah. God bless him, he's getting it now. And these days, that, uh, that, that uh, honor usually is reserved for, sadly, studios who are trying to push a, a, a movie project or something's coming out on DVD and they make it a big publicity it's always event. very timed with somebody doing something else. So to get a grassroots campaign off the ground and get somebody an award just based on a, on a body of work is very difficult. I've tried for years. His daughter, Nina, who is a friend of mine now because we kind of combined our efforts, uh, she tried for years. So it took seven or eight years before they finally did it, but this week we found out. So I was just happy to... Uh, uh, I... Uh... I am not the. Uh, I did not get married in the Batmobile as you did, Ralph. But I spent many, many, many long hours as a child watching every episode of Batman on a little black and white TV with rabbit ears in my kitchen because my father was watching Bowling for Dollars in the other room. <laughs> and you had to see that in color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, it, it's uh, he is a big, big part of uh, our childhoods, and it's nice, you know. Like, I, do do I give a shit about a star? No, but it means something for this guy, because he is a fucking Hollywood legend, and he should, does belong on that walk somewhere. And not only that, but with Family Guy, he's the mayor of Quahog, of course, on Family Guy. He has sort of bookended his career with two big, you know, so pop culture TV phenomena. Thing. So he'll little, get the TV obviously thing. Obviously, little TV circle. Yeah. So we're happy for him, and uh, I'll, I'll be... Do we know when? No, we don't know when it's going to happen yet. But I, I decided that, you know, it's like it's like 30 grand to put one of these stars in the ground. Really? I thought it was 14 back in the day. Back in the day, it's going up. up. It's yeah, going yeah. up. <laughs> so I don't want him to have to pay for any of it. So we're going to do some fundraising events. And I've decided that this theater has been so kind to us 
that um, I want to do like a James Lipton behind the actor's studio kind of evening with Adam West. Beautiful. Where Adam and I will sit up on this stage. Love it. And we're going to sell tickets and we're going to go over his whole career. I mean, the guy was working from the, you know, the 50s all the way up through now. He's got right. a ton of great stories. So we're going to do an evening with Adam West here at this theater in the next couple months or so. And then all the proceeds will go to help pay for the star. I love it. Yeah. Love it. So... Uh, Bert Ward will not be invited because <laughs> we don't have enough food in the kitchen. <laughs> have you seen Bert Ward lately? No. <laughs> yeah, but you know, somewhere... Holy Bert... Jenny Craig, Batman! <laughs> somewhere Bert Ward is going, have you seen Kevin Smith lately? <laughs> You've dropped a ton. He's, Bill, He's gained it. Really? He found it. All right. Uh, oh, look at that. The blue light means we're almost out of time. I got so much good stuff. <laughs> Well, we got to get to Amy Winehouse at least, right? Do you have clips of this? Amy Winehouse, drunk off her ass in Belgrade, Serbia. This is fucking sad. This man. was the kickoff of her European tour. Now, keep in mind, she went into rehab. No, to... no, no. no. <laughs> I stopped doing, doing it because they used to make fun of me whenever I jumped in, so I'm like, I'm not going no, no, no. <laughs> but that's because they want to do it. Fine. She went into rehab so she could get sober enough to perform this 12-city European tour. It's pretty ironic. <laughs> 12 steps, if you will. 12 steps. <laughs> well, the, she fell off the first step. <laughs> yeah, she didn't make it very far. This was her opener uh, in Belgrade, Serbia. She performed for 90 minutes, and by performed, I mean stumbled and slurred for 90 minutes. Let's just say she was there for 90 minutes. <laughs> just Kinda. barely. Yeah, just yeah. barely. Um, there's, there's a ton of great video on YouTube if you want to see any of it help yourself everybody's shooting the shit did you bring any? I brought you some everybody there's like I watched one and I was like oh man I wish there was a closer angle there was boom <laughs> and then when I was done watching that one another angle went up like apparently everybody was fucking shooting it yeah this thing was uh, covered better than the Academy Award red carpet <laughs> everyone added a new angle and, a, and a, a new version I brought you a little taste of a song she was singing <laughs> by singing I mean moaning, stumbling through. Uh, the song is called Addicted. <laughs> Coincidentally enough, here is Amy Winehouse. Just, just magic. That's now bad. I know what it must be like for you to work with me every week. Totally. That's what you look like when we go to the room after the show. You're just like hugging your arms. <laughs> playing with my fake tits. Playing with my wig. There was wig. one clip I saw of her. She was singing this other song and she's so fucked up she starts adjusting her hair. Her wig. She's got like a massive wig and she it looks starts... like she's going to pull it right the fuck yeah, off. It looks like she's going to pull it off and then you're just like, oh, here come the panties. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, she's clearly... I, who the fuck pushes her out on stage and goes, go? Management, baby. Yeah, but Gotta fuck be. management. Like, if any smart manager goes, you can't... If we put her on stage, it's going to hurt us in the future. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's take the hit tonight and figure out... <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe she took too many hits that took night. Took the needle. Yeah. I don't know. I just wouldn't push her out there because that's just killing the Amy Winehouse business in the future. Cause well, I guess you got her there. Yeah. There's 20,000 people out there. Now, here's the thing. The tickets were like, I don't know, 75 pounds or whatever that translates, 45 euros, whatever it was. But, but the average monthly income for a Serbian is 200 or something. So these were expensive, expensive. So this is huge. You have 20,000 people who have paid that to see this woman. They're there. She's there. What do you do? Do you cancel? Yeah. You should have, yeah, but based they pushed on her that, out. Man. They did cancel the rest of the tour. She is fucking canceled. Fucking 90 minutes of like... <laughs> 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 
Yeah, most so of the weird. video, you hear the entire audience singing the song, yeah, yeah. desperately trying to will her somehow to give her performance. And every once in a while, she's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Friday, Friday. <laughs> Can you send me to rehab? I said no, no, no. Friday girl would have been better off. Oh, shit, we're so late, but I got so much stuff. Let me just burn through some stuff real quick. Julia Ormond apparently going to play Lara from Krypton for Superman in the Superman's Geek News. Superman's mom. Yeah. Nice. Have a good Geek News real quick, James? Let's hit that, and we'll get through a quick... Some quick geek news, and then we'll jump right to the Liam Neeson. Julia Ormond going to play uh, Lara to Russell Crowe's Jor-El from the planet Krypton. You just said that. I know. I was just repeating it after the jingle, so oh, it'd be nice right. and clean. I was like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> you like Amy Winehouse. No, no. <laughs> Russell Crowe. <laughs> I mean, I get fucked up every week here, but you've never seen me that bad. Yeah. Yeah. Handle your high. That's you should key. applaud my alcoholism. You're absolutely yeah. right. Because you know what, Ralph? You're a functioning alcoholic. That's right. I like this crazy Emphasis lady. on the function. Yeah, yeah. Right, roller girl? All right. Christopher Maloney also added to the Superman cast this week for Man of Steel. Chris Maloney apparently is going to play a general in the film. That's all they're telling us. We don't know what general. It's not Zod because um, uh, that's Michael, Michael Shannon. Michael, Shannon Michael Shannon's Zod. got that gig. So he's either going to play another Kryptonian or he's going to play a uh, Earth general. Earth general who was fighting against the Kryptonians on our side with Superman. So, so is that the plot? Do we know that the plot is apparently uh, Zod is the main villain so far, as far as we know? But wouldn't he make a great Luther, uh, Christopher Maloney? He just shave that fucking head and just. It, are they putting ass? Luther in this? Movie? We don't know. They're, keep, they're it's very close to the vest. This, this story. I mean, I guess it's tough to do Superman without Luther, Luther but jeez, every time. They did Batman time. without Joker the first movie, so maybe That's they're true. setting it up. You know? That's true. Um, boy, let me just get through some stuff here. Sorry. Oh, I got to do this story because it's just sweet, sweet, sweet. It happened a little while ago, but we can't go without mentioning it. And I, the only reason I want to do it is because it was sent to me this week. I didn't even know about it, but here's the clip of the Ewok. We have the Ewok picture up there, James, you can show us. This news story hit the, uh, the newspaper. Ewok on indecency charge, it reads. Uh, Nicholas Reed, who played an Ewok in Return of the Jedi, was arrested for showing his penis to a 17-year-old on a train this week. <laughs> It gets funnier. <laughs> Nicholas Reed was playing one of the seven dwarfs in a uh, Snow White pantomime, which is like a play they do in England, right? Uh, he had a bottle of gin, according to friends. He got on the train on the way home from the show. Brad, is this insulting to you at all? I'm sorry, I forgot we have a... I have a midget friend in the crowd tonight. I don't want to be too rude. He got on the, uh, on the train in his dwarf costume. <laughs> Took off his dwarf hat, put it in his lap, pulled out his cock, and then a 17-year-old was sitting across from him on the train. He started flashing his cock by lifting up the dwarf hat periodically and giving her the eyes. Look down in here. Look down here, showing off his uh, dwarf cock. That's your move, Brad. I know. This guy totally ripped you off. I believe that move is called the high ho. Thank you and good night. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas, who also played uh, one of the Gringotts Goblins in the uh, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, played an Ewok warrior in Return of the Jedi. How old is this guy? He is 40. All right, so they made... Uh, I'm 40. Okay. Would you like to show us your cock? <laughs> yes. It, it just means that they made Return of the Jedi like 1982, so he was, what, 12 when he was in Return of the Jedi? May maybe they had put up... <laughs> yeah, right. Fair enough. Throw the part. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, he placed his hat on his crotch, said the young lady who was the victim of the crime. I didn't know whether to believe it or not, she said. <laughs> he tilted the hat towards me, lifted it so I could see. The lewd behavior continued for 30 to 40 minutes, she added. <laughs> He tried to catch my attention, tilting up his hat, looking at his crotch, and then looking at me a few times. 
Uh, she told the cops, who showed up, and when they took him into court, they asked him, why didn't you just hang your hat up on the coat rack, sir? He answered, I shit you not in court because I couldn't reach. <laughs> He has been found guilty, has not been charged yet, but apparently there was another previous incident in 2004. He was also performing in a Snow White play in England <laughs> where he uh, climbed into bed with the stage manager and his girlfriend and assaulted the woman before she knew that he was there. He is one pervy little Ewok, is what I'm saying. A dude fucking just sitting on the train, just putting a hat over dun, his dun, 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 Unbelievable. Maybe he was just trying to hide his pot of gold. <laughs> I ain't filing that. That was good. That was straight from Dublin. All righty. As we end every show, we're also doing this week with a segment that got started by John McGuire in Glasgow, Scotland. He started a Tumblr called liamneesonscock.tumblr.com. Kevin's, of course, obsessed with the size of Liam Neeson's cock, so every week we take a look at some of the more interesting facts about Liam's cock, the segment we like to call, How Big is Liam Neeson's Cock? Oh, we can't help but wonder How big is Liam Neeson's cock? Alrighty. <laughs> Didn't you hear that? <laughs> the chick in the audience, literally, it was a quiet moment. She goes, how big is Liam Neeson's cock? Well, for the folks who have uh, not been initiated, the reason Kevin's obsessed is because Janice Dickinson, the supermodel, claimed she slept with Liam Neeson. To be fair, I, I've been in, in, fascinated by his dick long before she said it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That was one of the first things I heard. But this kind of confirmed it for you. Yeah, she came out in public and said he was hung like a fucking Avion bottle. The large size. Yeah, the big one, not yeah. even the little one. But not when I first bottle. got into the business, that was one of the first things somebody told me. I was like, hey, man, who's got the biggest dick in the business? Just joking around without missing a beat. They were like, oh, Liam Neeson. No. I was like, get out of here. Like, fucking huge. Come down to his knee. I was like, get out of here. Schindler? I like, oh, yeah. Well, now, now it's been confirmed. And hear exactly how big Liam Neeson's cock is. Liam Neeson's cock is so big, it's actually in all six Star Wars films. <laughs> also, three Star Trek sequels, two Bond films, and was the original Darren on Bewitched. <laughs> I did not know that. Liam Neeson's cock is so big, his brand of cond condoms are made by a company called Lamb Holocaust. <laughs> what? what? The, no one actually killed the lambs? Too soon, the guy said. Because it takes a lot of lamb skin. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, he won season 12 of The Biggest Loser just by weighing in with an erection and then again five minutes later without one. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, it understands everything that happened on Lost. <laughs> big. Liam Neeson's cock is so big, when it looks up, it can't see Liam Neeson over its gut. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big that he once went to the doctor because of an uncontrollable swelling. The doctor found a wild boar inside still being digested. <laughs> it's, like a, it's a snake joke. See, because it? it's eating on its own. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, he has to squint to make out who's blowing him. <laughs> I gotta tell you, it was your delivery that sold that joke. That was great. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big that when he does helicopter dick, he actually flies. <laughs> Damn, I got a couple more pages. I should have saved that one for the that end. That was fucking good. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big that instead of sexting, he just lies on his back and tells the chick to look out the window. <laughs> yeah. Liam Neeson's cock is so big that Stephen King has nightmares about it. Liam Neeson's cock is so big, he took a picture of it last Christmas, and it's still printing. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big that he has to apply lube with a paint roller. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big that before you start to ride it, a conductor comes to collect your ticket and then gives you the option to upgrade to a sleeper compartment and a meal. Liam Neeson's cock is so big, he put the dong in the Ramalama Ding Dong. 
Liam Neeson's cock is so big, it's why a naked Janice Dickinson now looks like an inflated hot dog casing twisted into a balloon animal of a ferret. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, it could literally be knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, safe sex means a hula hoop in a circus tent. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, Gretzky refers to it as the great one. Liam Neeson's cock is so big, it ate the dingo that ate my baby. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, he doesn't give ladies pearl necklaces. He gives them cable-knit sweaters. <laughs> might be my favorite one of the best. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big that after he comes, all men fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, if it becomes erect at high noon, it can only be viewed through poking a hole in a shoebox and viewing a shadow. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, when he gets a hooker, he has to pay her via international bank transfer. Because she's in another country. Liam Neeson's cock is so big, it has become self-conscious and now hangs out with things larger than itself to feel better. TMZ reports Liam's cock has been seen hanging out with Ralph Garman's eyebrows on a regular basis. How dare you, sir? Liam Neeson's cock is so big, that irresistible forces and immovable objects step the fuck aside when it comes along. <laughs> and finally, Liam Neeson's cock is so big, he doesn't catch the clap. He catches the standing ovation. <laughs> Can't go out on a better note than that, man. That's it for Hollywood Babylon, man. This week, I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garman. Battle the fuck out, everybody! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time for Kevin Smith, Ralph Garman,